Hello, my name is Dr. Richard Wallace, Adjunct Associate Professor at the University of Illinois Department of Animal Sciences. I'm also a Senior Veterinarian for Pfizer Animal Health in the Dairy Technical Services team. We want to talk a little bit about how we can look at PC dart from a nutrition and a milk production standpoint. And as we've done in some of the previous modules, I like to take a look at the report that's very similar to the printout that a producer would get on their 202 report or their monthly DHI report. And so within PC dart, we can actually look at the milk production report in um, a breakout, and it's called the um, <clears throat> 803. So you can go up here, one of the places you can find it is go to the print um, uh, field and then drop down to the 803 report and that brings it out by stage of lactation and production. One of the issues with using it from here is that at least at the University of Illinois Dairy Herd that we're using here as our example herd, the University Herd has Holsteins, Jerseys, and other colored breeds. And so if you evaluate this report, it's going to look at the entire herd. And as we know, milk production and components are going to be a little bit different when we look at color breeds versus Holsteins. Another way you can get to that report is if you take a look where the blue herd statistics uh, day screen is and check this box, test day statistics, you'll notice that it jumps over to this, uh, the test day information from the most recent test. Right clicking in this area will give you the ability to again select that stage of lactation and milk production graph. But because we want to break this out by Holsteins versus jerseys and look at this at a very breed specific, I like to use it through the report sets. So if you click on the report tab, and again, there's two different ways we can get to that. We can go to view and click on reports, or you can even hit the F5 button. That'll get you to this screen as well. We want to then select the milk production and utter health set of reports and hit the little plus sign on that and you'll see a, a breakdown of the reports that are underneath that report set. Now you'll notice that I have many different reports listed in here and that's mainly because I've added my own reports to this uh, set because as I evaluate other herds I like to have these reports all organized for me. But the first one I have on the top here is that 803 stage of lactation and milk production report. You'll notice that you, we can break this out by test day, so we can go historical back to 1997 on test day, but let's just look at the most recent test day information. The other thing is, again, we can break this out by string. So if I want to look at the entire herd, like I might do for reproduction or utter health, I could select a zero and that'll be everybody, all cows in the herd. But again, because Holsteins have, you know, different milk production and, and components, we're going to break this out by string. So string one in the university herd are the lactating Holsteins, string two are Jerseys, three would be Ayrshire's and Brown Swiss and, and Milking Shorthorn. So let's just look at the Holstein herd and break this out by the Holstein um, string. So if I select string one, pick this report and hit preview, you'll see that it pops up very similar to what you might be uh, familiar with on the 802 or the 202 report or the printed report that gets sent to the producer after test day. This information is broken out by stage of lactation and then lactation number. And so you'll notice that each one of these cells represents the number of cows that are within this category. So we have 13 first lactation animals that are from 1 to 40 days in milk as of our most recent test day, particularly from a Holstein standpoint. Now I get kind of leery of information that has less than five animals in a cell. So you'll notice we only have four cows in this cell here in the second lactation. So this 90 pounds of milk might actually have a little bit of fluctuation you're not quite uh, familiar with or, or be confident in. Uh, but it's probably not too different as you look at these uh, four animals here producing 90 pounds of milk, and it's probably fairly appropriate. But if you get a very uh, wild or extraneous value within one of these categories, go back up and take a look at how many cows were represented in that cell, and that'll tell you whether it might be one cow throwing off that value. So as you look at this, again, it's a very nice way to sort of look at a rough lactation curve. So early lactation heifers start off at 74, peak milk sitting there at 90 pounds, peak dry matter intake at 87, 200 and 
days to 200, uh, 305 days, so sort of that mid to late lactation starting to fall off, and then late lactation cows, uh, still nine animals over 306 days at 73 pounds, and the first lactation animals are averaging 81 pounds. It looks like our second lactation animals are really dropping off here. You can see 60 and 57 pounds as you get into late lactation, which really drags their average down uh, for that entire lactation. But they do start off fairly good, and then they drop off. And then if you look at our older cows, they're starting at 65 pounds, so we don't get a good start on those uh, cows, but they do end up peaking out here at uh, 91 and 94. Now we can look at peak milk. If we scroll down, I'm going to keep both of these graphs on the chart here um, because we have summit and peak milk here as well. Um, so summit milk would be the average of the highest two of the first three test days. And so that's going to be really representing early lactation, where peak milk is going to be based on, um, it could be anywhere in the lactation, but again, most likely going to happen uh, fairly early in the lactation. So this gives you an idea of the actual peak milk for the animals by lactation group, and you can kind of slot that in here with the uh, stage of lactations and get a good idea what the lactation curve looks like from a numerical standpoint. I also like to look at this lactation summary and see what the average age of calving is the first calf heifers. So we've had 90 heifers calved in the herd and the average age is at 23 months with uh, 22 to 24 being the goal and uh, we're right in there at that 23 months. Average age of the herd right now is sitting at just under 40 months of age. On the right hand side of the graph over here from the slice and dice standpoint is we can look at fat protein and then um, for the whole herd and fat and protein. And so we can see that we have a fairly high fat testing uh, Holstein herd, averaging 3.8 on the heifers, 3.9 on the second lactation, and 4.1 on the older cows. And many would say that uh, we may be leaving some milk on the table. Um, one of the things I've noticed as I've worked with this herd over the years is that from a breeding standpoint, uh, selection has been for components for the Holstein herd. So this is not really um, out of the ordinary for this dairy. Well, we can take a look at what the protein fat ratio is then for first lactation animals on first test. And you can see that as you work your way through. Probably a little bit concerning is that the average for the third lactation greater is up over 5%, so possibility of having some ketosis or uh, subclinical ketosis going on is, is, is fairly um, consistent, and that might tie into why we see a lower milk production in these seven animals that are in their uh, early lactation. So some really good nutritional information we can kind of pick up or at least clue us into maybe some things happening on this dairy, at least with the Holstein cows. <clears throat> We break it down by lactation summary. You can see that we have our projected 305 milk production. So we have a really good group of heifers calving in this herd. So almost 28,000 pounds of milk with 1,000 pounds of fat and 1,800 pounds of protein. Typically, I see that this second lactation group actually has a higher 305 ME than the first lactation. So something is, is going on with these heifers, uh, second lactation animals in this point, or we just have a really good group of heifers that have calved in. When you take a look at the difference from herd mates, you can see that they're actually doing very well as, um, in that as well. <clears throat> the bottom part of this graph, again, very similar. If you're used to looking at the DHI printout, uh, you'll see this monthly DHI test date, days in the test period, uh, the number of cows on test day. So you can see we're running right around 200 cows in the herd on test day with an average days in milk of slightly under 100 in 180 days, which again, it would be a nice goal to be under 180 days. A couple months where we're over, but for the most part, we're right at that uh, 180 days. Milk production on test day for our Holstein herd is averaging about 84 pounds. Had a little fall off here this summer, um, but actually the August and the July during that heat stress, um, not really that bad of a fall off. Standardized 150-day milk would be something similar to if you were used to looking at management level milk. Um, it basically standardizes everything back to 150 days. Being that the herd is averaging 177 days, I wouldn't expect a whole lot of difference between these values um, and uh, not as wide as spread as you might heat see in a herd that's averaging, say, 200 days in milk and have milking more of a stale herd. 
Don't use this rolling herd average too much, but you can see that the rolling herd average is pretty steady at 26,000 in this herd, and we've creeped up over 1,000 pounds of fat and uh, steadily over 800 pounds of protein. So again, a fairly good component herd, uh, being that the way our milk is processed, which is a, a, part, uh, a blend of class three and fluid milk, uh, we actually get paid very well for the components in this herd. So that's where I would start. Um, very similar again to what we would look at on a, on a routine printout from a DHI pay, paper. The other thing I would look at is from a nutritional standpoint is the milk urine nitrogen and looking at that from a MUN analysis standpoint. So here again if you click on that 123 report or the MUN you get a slice and dice. So we've broken it up by first lactation, second, third, and greater by days in milk. And so it gives you a little bit of ability to see how things are moving throughout the lactation. And so when these mercury nitrogen values start to get elevated, uh, that usually means that we don't have real efficient rumen function. And uh, so these nitrogen nitrogenous compounds are then being absorbed into the bloodstream and then being picked up in the milk as mercury nitrogen. Uh, they break it down by low mercury nitrogen from 1 to 11 what they might consider quote unquote normal 12 to 18 although I know that Dr. Mike Hutchins would recommend uh, much lower values as, as being um, ideal but certainly any cows with over 19 will be considered a fairly high level so it gives you an idea where you're sitting on the dairy as far as cows over um, 19 as far as a value and so you can see we're doing pretty good uh, not too many animals throughout the lactation and very consistent um, throughout uh, days in milk and so if I just scroll down here and look at the entire herd uh, you can see we're averaging about 12.6 for the whole herd right now and very consistent across days in milk as well as consistent across lactation number and so I'd say that that would tell you we've got a pretty consistent feeding program going on in the dairy and working out pretty well from that standpoint. So those would be the, sort of the two things I would look at from a, a hard report standpoint. We might also look at some of the herd graphs from a milk production standpoint. And we can look at peak milk by lactation or summit milk by lactation. So I'm going to start with the peak milk one where we can actually chart this information over time. Now, the y-axis is going to be automatically generated for you if you'd like to alter that y-axis to make the, the value sort of look more representative of what you would expect. You can click on this little protractor icon and that brings up the ability to modify this chart. If you click on the axis, we can select that left axis, uncheck automatic, and change the minimum value to say zero and the maximum value to maybe one 30 or something along those lines. And then if we close that, now you get a little better idea on what's happening. The herd, uh, the first lactation animals from a peak standpoint, pretty consistently around 90 pounds, actually creeped up here over the last year. Again, this is three years worth of data. So now we're upwards of 95 pounds for those first lactation animals. And I think you can look at that overall trend over the last two years anyway, has been a pretty steady incline in peak milk. Uh, the purple is going to be the third lactation cows, and they've gained pretty well, as well as the second lactation animals are maybe a little bit more steady um, in that at 115 pounds of peak milk. Uh, we know that every pound of peak, at least from our from research, is, would give you about another 220 pounds in the lactation, and so obviously that's what we're shooting for is, is improved peak milks, and that should improve our lactation production. I'm going to click on this rolling herd average just because that's what a lot of people like to look at. Um, as far as a, a metric for herd production. Um, unfortunately, what this her rolling herd average gives you is not the Holstein average. This is going to be the whole herd, so you're bringing in the colored breeds, but you can see that there's um, you know, quite a bit of a swing. But again, remember what that y-axis is doing. That y-axis is from 21.8 um, up to uh, 25.8. And so you can, again, manipulate that axis by changing it to uh, something that might be a little bit more um, evaluative and so you can see we're you know consistent from a 22,000 three years ago to where we're now on a herd average a little under 25,000 when you factor in the color breeds that are in the herd. 
Test day milk in 150 day milk, day milk is a good one to look at. I like to actually, um, I typically uncheck the all cows. And way to way to do that is hold the control key down and then select. And now I'm only going to look at the milking cows in the 150 day milk. And this value, this, this spread between the 150 day milk and the test day milk is going to give you a rough idea what's happening from a reproductive standpoint. If we're not getting cows pregnant, we typically are milking a more stale herd, so we have longer days in milk, so the um, test day milking cow number is going to be lower than the 150 day by a more significant amount. Now again, remember this graph, this y-axis is going to be based on the data that's there, so we can come in there and, and change this to uh, values to sort of give you a little bit tighter idea what's happening over time. And you can see that these values are actually very close together. Usually if they're within five pounds of each other, um, I'm very comfortable that our milk production is doing uh, well from a reproduction and a um, milk production standpoint. So those would be the graphs I would look at from a herd level. We can also look at production information from a cow level and scatter plot. So one of the graphs I like to look at here is days in milk versus um, milk production. So we've got a regression line that shows us that as days in the milk gets longer, milk production goes down. But now keep in mind, this is going to be all breeds. And one way I can split, split that out is break it out by breed. And so now we can look at the lines based on Jersey. And we don't have very many of the other breeds, Brown Swiss and Ayrshire, only two Ayrshires, one Brown Swiss, but we have nine jerseys in the herd. So what we might want to do is filter this out and just look at the Holstein cows. So if I click on the filter button, I can just click Holstein breed, hit OK, and now I'm only going to look at Holsteins. And then I might actually want to do this by lactation number. So now we're looking at red is lactation 1, green is lactation 2, and blue is going to be lactation 3 or greater. The regression lines are in there, um, something that uh, you can use as uh, to your value, but I usually uncheck those. And very similar how we might do something with the um, somatic cell count graph. I'm going to go and put the crosshairs in, but first I want to fix that axis. I want to get that down to zero as my bottom axis, and I'm going to go to, say, 140 pounds of milk for my top axis. And then I'm going to put the crosshairs in, and I like to say by 150 days in milk, any self-respecting Holstein cow that's in the United States should be able to produce at least 50 pounds. And so you can see that we have no animals that are less than 150 days in milk, first lactation, or anything that are less than 50 pounds on test day. And actually, if we take this line over, it's not until we get out to about 210, 215 days in milk that we actually have a couple animals that are below 50 pounds of milk. So when you look at marginal milk right now at this point in time with feed costs the way they are, uh, it could be 50, 60 pounds is break even. And so at least on this dairy, milk production in the Holstein herd is actually holding up very well as we uh, work into the to the fall, and again, this is from a September test date. So I believe that um, covers most of the information that I typically look at. Again, I've got a couple other reports I can look at from a milk production standpoint, uh, but uh, for now, I'm going to stop right there and say these are some ways, places you can start to evaluate milk production and nutrition with deep PC-DART records.